Hi, my name is Daryl Ang and I am the conductor for this program, An Evening of French Music with the Singapore Symphony Orchestra. For Debussy's Claire de Lune, it's first of all a very popular piece, originally written for the piano. I think um, everybody who plays the piano either has played it before or really, really wants to play it. So the music itself is not unfamiliar, everybody knows it. The story behind it is a little more, um, I would say, uh, obscure. Now, Debussy being a very, uh, I would say, um, unique composer with a, <laughs> with, a, with a literal bent, he was, of course, always looking into poetry, getting his influences from, from the poets and the writers and uh, the, even the journalists and the artists around him at that time. So his uh, point of reference was a poem by Paul Verlaine. And Verlaine, as uh, you might know, was a, was a very powerful figure at that time and a very influential uh, poet. And Paul Verlaine's poem was about the, the soul of the human being uh, being a reflection of the moon. And um, what Debussy is trying to capture in this piece is really the, I would say, the atmosphere behind that poem, as well as the colours it elicits, especially within him, when he is reading and when he's feeling the poetry. Now, this arrangement that we are playing was done by a student of Debussy by the name of André Caplet. And he has written it for a small orchestra, and the specificity of this arrangement actually, um, I would say, lends its colour very, very well to the arrangement of the original piece that was uh, first written for the piano. Um, Caplet uses just very soft wind instruments, and when, and when I say soft wind instruments, I mean um, he doesn't use the brass, he doesn't use trumpets or trombones or, or, um, or even a tuba, for example. Um, it's just the woodwinds and the French horn, but the French horn is made to sound like a woodwind. Uh, so he, does, he stays away from, from the registers of the French horn, which makes it sound like a very brassy uh, military sort of instrument. Um, but he turns that instrument into something like a cross between a clarinet and a bassoon so that it blends in completely with the sound picture that we're getting from the warm strings and the very light, transparent and airy texture we're getting from the woodwinds. So this arrangement is completely, um, I would say, uh, in tune with the, the message of DBC. There are washes of uh, string sound. It sounds sometimes sounds like waves. Uh, and then when the winds come in, it sounds like little birds or owls tweeting. It's, it's a fantastic arrangement that I urge everybody to listen to. One of the pieces that we're also doing is a suite of five short movements by Maurice Ravel that is based on the stories from Mother Goose. And if you're a kid or if you were a kid before, like I was, you would definitely know uh, Mother Goose and the stories associated with Mother Goose. Ravel uh, took a couple of uh, stories from the compendium and he wrote music to those stories, and then he pulled in a couple of other pieces that were not from Mother Goose, but were in the same vein as Mother Goose. So, for example, one of my favorite movements to conduct is the third movement. It's called Lederonette, uh, Empress of the Pagodas. Now, Lederonette, this figurine, is not even in Mother Goose. Um, he took it from somewhere else. I don't even know where. Uh, nobody does. <laughs> Maybe he created it himself. But Lederonet, in his imagination, was this little uh, toy doll-like 
um, maybe Chinese emperors, maybe Japanese, nobody knows, um, that is uh, that presides and is empress over um, a kingdom of pagodas. And you will hear in the music that it's very, sometimes very mechanical. Uh, he employs the xylophone to make those sounds, uh, those mechanical robotic sounds. And then you'll hear the woodwinds along with the, the high woodwinds along with the, the xylophone. Basically, it's just a sound picture. And, the, and why I like it, why I like this movement is because it is fun to conduct, it is fun to listen to. There's a lot of energy at the beginning. Then comes this very mysterious, uh, strange middle section. And then the fast bit that starts the piece comes back at the end and um, you get this, this mechanical robotic picture of, of, uh, of a made, uh, made, make-believe princess. And um, I find it all very colourful. And if I was a kid, I would be very enchanted and enraptured by this music. So from the Mother Goose Suite of Ravel, we move into a slightly similar piece, uh, similar in its sound and in its character, but very different in its approach to picturing music. And that is the Divertissement or the Divertimento by uh, Jacques Hibert. Uh, Hibert was a very different sort of composer. He was not somebody who's, who was looking to, to write serious pieces of music. That's not to say that he was a joker, but he, he had this, this uh, rebellious spirit within him and it comes out in his divertissement. So the divertissement is a mix of many, many styles. It's a mix of the classical Haydn-esque Mozartian sort of writing for small orchestra. And then at the same time you have you know, echoes of salon music, of Moulin Rouge, of, you know, of, of that era in Paris. And then you also have echoes of the music which composers were crazy about at that time. So you, you can hear strains of Wagner's Tristan and Isolde um, and Mussorgsky's uh, Boris Godunov, for example. So it's, it's a weird mix of all kinds of music. So in the Divertissement of Iber, you will hear this orchestra that all of a sudden turns into a circus orchestra and then it flips, it goes into a very um, introspective, uh, dark, romantic kind of, um, not even a, a chamber group, but it sounds like a big op op opera pit orchestra. And then it it then flips about again and then it goes into um, an entertainment venue orchestra, so from circus to opera pit to entertainment and then you, ha you'll s you hear the, the solos from the trombone or from the trumpet or from the horn and they, they are characters within a greater play or drama. It's, it's all basically it's a, theat it's a theat theatrical piece uh, written in sound for orchestra imagined by an, a, a composer who was not short of imagination. And he basically just lets it rip in the divertissement. So I would definitely encourage you to discover this very interesting piece by Jacques Hibert, Divertissement. <laughs> 